morning, all you life forms. Wherever you may be. I'm in Kentucky. Without a banjo. I know. It's a crime. I hope they don't get too mad at me. So it looks like we're just passing by, what, Mount Vernon, Livingston, exit 59. On Interstate 75 northbound. We're headed up to Canada. We got to deliver this load that I got in the box behind me into Newmarket, Ontario uh, tomorrow, midday sometime. So we're going to be there tonight, probably around like 3 in the morning or so, maybe later. And then whenever I'm allowed to move the truck again, we're going to go deliver this load and hopefully have time to go get a reload somewhere else. Or maybe there's a preloaded trailer waiting for me. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to have to wait till Monday. I'm guessing because it's uh, Thursday today when I'm filming this. So it's about a two day drive from down in Georgia up to Ontario. And I think they got another load for me headed back down south, or that's where they're trying to send me, anyways. think of when I think of Ohio. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Quickly swinging in here, grab a bite to eat, and uh, we're back on our way. Let's see if I can find a decent parking spot. Think there'll be anything right in the front? because uh, I'm gonna get blocked in there by people waiting to fuel. Oh, and these are all reserved spots too. Of course they are! Because people actually pay money to park. You know, if none of you would do that, they would stop making you pay to park there. Not all the parking, you don't have to pay for all the parking, just the best parking. But if nobody ever used it, nobody ever, if everybody refused to pay for it, it would become a thing of the past. parking at the back of the lot. Why? And why would you want to park there anyway? Because once this is all filled up, you wouldn't be able to get in or out of either side. Everyone would be jammed in. Well, that's ridiculous. Pay to park in the back. I can almost understand the whole idea of paying to park in the front, but paying to park in the back, that's something different. Nothing crazy going on today to tell you about. It's just one of those days, rolling along. We're in Ohio now. Yeah, I already told you that, right? Drew Carey, Ohio, gotcha. Uh, 
about halfway up the state on the west side, headed up Interstate 75 here. We'll be in Michigan and at the border with Canada. Port Huron is the, the town I was thinking of yesterday. Well, it's been a pretty good day so far. What do you think, Diesel? What do you think? Very nice. Still on I-75 here in Ohio. Let's see if we can get onto the back on the interstate here. Excuse me. Excuse me. Thank you. Yeah, you got a whole nother lane right beside you there, bud. There you go. Thank you very much. So sorry I inconvenienced you. I can understand if there was somebody in the lane beside him, but he's there all by himself. <laughs> Hey, Diesel. What? You complain too much, man. I know, I see it in the comments section almost every day. Stop complaining, Trucker Josh! I know. It's part of the video now. I think if I don't complain about something, people will complain about that I'm not complaining about anything. And then what do the complainers have to complain about? See? I'm just keeping the world turning here. I've gotta keep complaining about something. At least one thing every day. This truck is incredible with fuel economy. Incredible. It uses just about a half, just over half the fuel that the Volvo did. Just incredible. I mean, they'd have to make them pretty fuel efficient for us to be able to make money with these things nowadays. I mean, freight rates haven't changed much in decades. Cost of living has went through the roof. Inflation has went through the roof. But the freight rates pretty much still stay the same. But that's why I'm in this Peterbilt right now. Because now, as long as I'm moving this direction, I'm getting paid. I guess I could go the other direction and get paid too. I could just go backwards the whole way. But it would take way longer. And I'd still get paid the same either way. So I'll go forward to go faster this way. Don't give me that look, Diesel. That was funny. I am not the lamest person you've ever met. It's not true. It's not true. It's perfect weather outside right now. Absolute perfect. 25 Celsius. Probably about like 70 Fahrenheit. Just right in the middle. Right in the ballpark. Uh-oh. Bambi. Bambi, I told you not to play in the road. Oh boy, poor Bambi. Been seeing a lot of that on the side of the road lately. It's such a waste. It's good meat. I'm not much of a hunter myself. I like target practice. I like shooting plinkers and shooting targets. Target shooting, that's my thing. Like, I got guns at home too, but for the most part, I just like, I like hitting that target and hearing a ba-ding. I mean, I'd be more of a hunter myself if I had more time, but I'm doing this all day, every day. So when I come home, usually I want to spend it, you know, I don't want to go out on like a, a couple of day hunt or whatever. I'd love to do it sometime, but I just, I don't have the time to do it often. And I actually haven't ever gone yet. But my father-in-law keeps talking about wanting to take me out uh, big game hunting possibly in the future one day. Maybe that'll happen. Maybe my dad will come with us too. That'd be fun. No idea. I think we'd go up north for that. And uh, I don't know if we'd be hunting moose or elk. We'd have to see. Like if, I, if I make a trip out of it, it'd be a lot of fun. I just, it's just not something I can do very often because I got other things to do when I get home. Oh, skeet shooting. I love skeet shooting. That's always fun. Not very good at it, apparently. <laughs> but I try. It's fun. Well, the road's smoothed out here. I was going to tell you that I was going to give you one guess to what state I'm in, but suddenly the roads are all smooth. So we're in Michigan right now, the state where you got to tighten all your bolts after you leave. These roads are pretty bad, but I think they do it on purpose. I think they do it on purpose. It's to slow you down so that you don't go speeding through their state. See? That way the police don't have to pull you over. You said you didn't want the cops anymore, so they just let the roads get completely out of hand, and then they don't need to pull you over because if you try to speed, you're going to wreck your car. 
thinking, right? Thinking outside the box, I like it. Smart. What is the Flying J? No, I'm not gonna stop there yet, I'm good. Don't need a coffee yet. We have uh, four and a half hours or so to go. Oh, it should be more than that, actually. My GPS over there is telling me that uh, I'm gonna be arriving in Newmarket, Ontario. Or is that where I'm going, Newmarket? I'm gonna go to the Husky in Bradford, anyway. It's right next door. Uh, it's telling me I'm gonna arrive there at 3.30 in the morning, but I'm 460 kilometers away. That's four and a half hours, and it's 10 o'clock right now. So 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, I should be there at like 2.30. Plus I wanna stop for a coffee and fuel yet, so I'll probably be there around three o'clock. I'm gonna be 3, 3.30 in the morning. So hopefully I can get to sleep before the sun rises, but you know, we're getting further north. The sun is refusing to go down again, but we're still pretty far south. Once we go back home to Manitoba or up like further north to Edmonton and north of Edmonton up there, uh, the sun just doesn't want to go away th this time of year, which is fantastic. This is my favorite time of year. We're coming up to the summer solstice and that's the saddest day of the year. Well, that's actually the best day of the year followed by the saddest day because then you know, that the days are going to start getting shorter again. The daylight hours. I love these long daylight hours. I really do. But, you know, time keeps going. Well, uh, before you know it, we'll start getting excited for Thanksgiving and then Christmas. Can't wait for Christmas. Then I gotta put all the Christmas lights back up. <laughs> I know some of you are wondering why I take the Christmas lights down. I'm wondering the same thing, but... Uh, the wife told me to take them down, so I took them down, okay? That's my answer for you. I, I would have left them up, but I understand her reasoning. Uh, we spent quite a bit of money onto those things already, and we want them to last. And it's a good thing that I took them down. Uh, if it wasn't for her, I would have left them up, but because of her, those Christmas lights are gonna last for many more Christmases than they would have if it was just me. So there you go best way to describe why I took them down and why I'm gonna put them back up but this year I'm gonna put the Christmas lights up in like September or something or October no not September October probably in October but I won't turn them on until uh, after Remembrance Day and Veterans Day I'm thinking that's what I'm gonna do just so it's a little warmer when I when I go up there to hang them up and stuff and you know we, we always add a little bit every year but let's stop talking about Christmas okay it's summertime talk about Christmas around Christmas summertime so hopefully I can get to bed tonight before the, the sun starts coming up because I, I find it very hard to fall asleep after the sun starts coming up again. Not a fan of that. But it is what it is, you know? Whatever I gotta do for the job. It's been a good day though. It's been a good day. Long day today. Long day. We'll have gone about 1,150 kilometers today at the end of our day and uh, that's, well, I'd say 750 miles or so. All oh, this transmission. This transmission, you know what? It's the only thing I don't like about this truck. The only thing. I like everything else. This truck is amazing, other than the automatic 10 speed transmission that just bogs down. Like, why does it shift down to 800 RPM when climbing a hill? Like, really? What you doing down at 800 RPM? What do you think you're doing down there? I always gotta babysit it, you know? And I don't like babysitting my truck. It's supposed to know, it's supposed to be all fancy and automatic. It's not very automatic because it still doesn't know what it's doing. And I, and you know, I gotta complain, like I said before. I gotta give the people who complain about my complaining something, something to complain about. Because if I don't do that, I ruin their day and they have nothing to complain about. So I complain so they can complain. Really, I'm just, helping them out, you know? They're bored. They're sitting at home in their parents' basement. They got nothing else to do but to complain on YouTube videos, you know? And they like to complain about me complaining. So I, I like to give that to them and it's like a little small victory for them. You know, it makes their day. I know they go to work, they come home and they're like, oh, I can't wait to complain about Trucker Josh. <laughs> I'm just bugging you guys. Uh, some of you, I'm serious. But the rest of you, I'm just joking. <laughs> Uh, you guys are all awesome. And a lot of you have been here with me for a long time already. So I appreciate that. I really do. I hope you know that. I really do appreciate you guys a lot. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. You know? There's a lot of creators out there making amazing content. But you guys still stick around here with me. And uh, that means a lot. Oh, we're losing our light. Oh, into the darkness. 
This is the Canadian darkness here, eh? Oh, oh the Canadian bumps there. Oh, oh, there we go. But my headlights, they're brighter than the Volvo though, eh? Can you see that? We made it, Diesel. We made it with 24 minutes to spare. We found a new truck stop that I've never stopped at before. That doesn't happen often. Found it with that Trucker Path app that I've talked about before. Very handy app, I really like it. Uh, it's Bloomington Esso. In uh, Whitchurch Stoof, what? I don't know where I am. I don't really want to give it away because then you guys are all going to come and fill this place up and then there it won't be a secret anymore. Bloomington Esso, uh, on Bloomington Road in yeah, Whitchurch, Whitchurch Dash Stoofville, Ontario. Right, so that tells you all you need to know right there. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's near Newmarket, Ontario. Never knew this place was here, but uh, it's kind of out of the way. I wouldn't usually stop by here, but since it's so close to Newmarket, it works out for me this time. And uh, we're gonna get a quick sleep here. I gotta stop for my eight hours, and then after my eight hours, I can get going again. Then I'll uh, roll on down to uh, Newmarket. Time is 3.30 when I stopped here now. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 30 a.m. I can start my pre-trip. 11.45, I can get rolling out of here and I can be in Newmarket for noon. And uh, see what happens. Well, this place is a mess. I haven't cleaned anything up today. My garbage can fell over. I don't even want to show it to you. It was a long day today, uh, 24 minutes left. So I used, uh, no, I drove 12 and a half hours today. Giggity. So I'm gonna go to bed now. I'll see you tomorrow right here, right? You're gonna be here, right? I hope so, I need someone to hang out with. The weasel gets boring after a while. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Diesel. I'm just kidding, you don't get boring. I gotta take him out though, so. Uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out.